ஓம் நமோ பகவதே ஸ்ரீரமணாய நமஸ்காரம் டு ஆல் திஸ் இஸ் மதி ரத்னசாமி ரெப்ரஸண்டிங் டேம்ப் ஆஃப் வாடா சத்சங் குரூப் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டியானாஸ் ஆஃப்ரிங் ஃப்ரம் ரமண மகரிஷி அண்ட் த பேத் ஆஃப் செல்ஃப் நாலேஜ் ஏ பயோகிராஃபி பை ஆர்த்தர் ஆஸ்பான் செகண்ட் எடிஷன் டூ தௌசண்ட் டூ சாப்டர் எயிட்டீன் செகண்ட் ஃப்ரம் தக்ஷா அண்ட் கஞ்சன் தே ஆர் ஆஃப்ரிங் ரமண சத்குரு and finally from geetanjali shiva from gems of bhagwan om namo bhagavate shri ramanaya who am i enquiry for all thoughts the source is the i thought the mind will merge only by self enquiry who am i the thought who am i will destroy all other thoughts and finally kill itself also If other thoughts arise without trying to complete them one must enquire to whom did this thought arise what does it matter how many thoughts arise as each thought arises one must be watchful and ask to whom is this thought occurring the answer will be to me if you enquire who am i the mind will return to its source or where it is shoot from the thought which arose will also submerge as you practice like this more and more the power of the mind to remain at at its source is increased by means of a moderate quantity of sattvic or pure food which is superior to all other rules and regulations of self discipline the sattvic or pure quality of the mind will grow and self enquiry will be helped though ancient and timeless sense of attachments in the shape of vasanas or subtle tendencies may rise countless like the waves of the sea they will also be destroyed as dhyana progresses without giving any room for doubt whether it would at all be possible to eradicate all those vasanas and be the self alone one must take hold ceaselessly of dhyana of the self however great a sinner one may be instead of lamenting i am a great sinner how can i make any progress one must completely forget the fact of being a sinner and earnestly pursue meditation of self he is then sure to succeed if the ego is present all else will also exist if it is absent all else will also vanish as ego is all this to enquire what this ego is is to give up all attachment controlling speech and breath and diving deep within oneself as a man dives into water to recover something that has fallen there one must find out the source whence the ego rises by means of keen insight enquiry which constitutes the path of jnana consists not in overly repeating i i but in searching by means of a deeply introverted mind where from the i springs to think i am not this or i am that may be of help in the enquiry but cannot be the actual enquiry when we quest within our mind who am i and reach the heart i topples down and immediately another entity will reveal itself proclaiming i i even though it also emerges saying i it does not connote the ego but the one perfect existence if we unceasingly investigate the form of the mind we find there is no such thing as the mind this is the direct path open to all thoughts alone constitute the mind and for all thoughts the base or source is the i thought i is the mind if we go inward questioning for the source of the i the i topples down this is the jnana enquiry where the i merges another entity emerges as i i of its own accord that is the perfect self there is no use of removing doubts 
If we clear one doubt, another arises and there will be no end of doubts. All doubts will cease only when the doubter and his source have been found. Seek for the source of the doubter and you will find is really non-existent. Doubter ceasing, doubts will cease. Reality being yourself, there is nothing for you to realize. All regard the unreal as real. What is required is that you give up regarding the unreal as real. The object of all meditation or dhyana or japa is only that, to give up all thoughts regarding the non-self, to give up many thoughts and hold on to one thought. The object of all sadhana is to make the mind one-pointed, to concentrate it on one thought and thus exclude our many thoughts. If we do this, eventually even the one thought will go and the mind will get extinguished in its source. When we inquire within, who am I? The I investigated is the ego. It is that which makes vichara inquiry also. The self has no vichara. That which makes the inquiry is the ego. The I about which the inquiry is made is also the ego. As the result of the inquiry, the ego ceases to exist and only the self is found to exist. What is the best way of killing the ego? To each person, that way is best, which appears easiest and appeals the most. All the ways are really good as they lead to the same goal, which is the merging of the ego in the self. What the bhakta calls surrender, the man who does vichara calls jnana. Both are trying to take the ego back to the source from which it sprang and make it merge there. To ask the mind to kill itself is like making the thief the policeman. He will go with you and pretend to catch the thief, but nothing will be gained. So you must turn inward and see from whence the mind rises and then it will cease to exist. Breath and mind arise from the same source and one of them is controlled, the other is also controlled. As a matter of fact, in the quest method, which is more correctly whence am I and not merely who am I, we are not simply trying to eliminate, saying we are not the body, nor the senses and so on, to reach what remains as the ultimate reality, but we are trying to find out whence the I thought or the ego arises within us. The method contains within it, though implicitly and not expressly, the watching of the breath. When we watch where from the I thought arises, we are necessarily watching the source of the breath also, as the I thought and the breath arise from the same source. Breath control may serve as an aid but can never by itself lead to the goal. While doing it mechanically, take care to be alert in mind and to remember the I thought and the quest for its source. Then you will find that where the breath sings, there the I thought arises. They sink and arise together. The I thought will also sink along with the breath. Simultaneously, another luminous and infinite I, I will emerge and it will be continuous and unbroken. That is the goal. It goes by different names. God, Self, Kundalini, Shakti, Consciousness, etc. First, know who you are. This requires no shastras or scriptures or scholarship. This is simply experience. The state of being is now and here all along. You have lost hold of yourself and are asking others for guidance. The purpose of philosophy is to return the mind inward. The ego comes up only by holding you, the self. Hold yourself and the ego will vanish. Until then, the sage will be happy saying, there is, 
and the ignorant will be asking where regulation of life such as getting up at a fixed hour bathing doing mantra japa etc all this is for people who do not feel drawn to self enquiry or are not capable of it but for those who can practice this method all rules and disciplines are unnecessary undoubtedly it is said in some books that one should go on cultivating one good quality after another and this prepare for moksha but for those who follow the jnana or vichara marga their sadhana is itself quite enough for acquiring all divine or divine qualities they need not do anything else om namo bhagavate shri ramanaya today i'm reading from the book ramana maharshi and the path of self knowledge this is a biography by arthur osborn i'm reading from the second edition of 2002 and i will be reading excerpts from chapter 18 entitled continued presence There was not the wild grief and despair that has so often followed the departure of a spiritual master from earth. The normality that had been so pronounced still continued. It began to be apparent with what care and compassion Sri Bhagavan had prepared his devotees for this. Many years previously a will had been drawn up stating how the ashram was to be run when the master was no longer bodily present a group of devotees took this to shri bhagavan and he read it through very carefully and showed approval after which they all signed as witnesses briefly it stated that puja ritualistic worship should be performed at his samadhi and that of the mother that the family of niranjananda swami son should be supported and that the spiritual center of tiruvannamalai should be kept alive but it is the third item that is the great legacy and obligation it reads The devotees are contributing thereto according to their nature and capacity. Some there are who do no more than sit in silent meditation or who merely come when circumstances permit to receive consolation and pour out the dev- the devotion and gratitude of their hearts. They are disciples of the master who said open quote lectures may entertain individuals for hours without improving them silence on the other hand is permanent and benefits the whole of mankind end of quote even though their meditation falls short of the tremendous spiritual silence of bhagavan it not only receives but transmits his grace and is bound to have effect and if several worship or meditate together the effect is cumulative others by speech or writing help to set in train an interest which may ripen into a deeper understanding those who are drawn more to outer activity have the burden of organization upon them which also is a sadhana and acceptable to shri bhagavan only when performed as such they hope eventually to erect a hall of meditation at present there is a simple stone samadhi surmounted by a lingam and covered over with palm leaf roofing between the temple and the old hall everywhere his presence is felt and yet there are differences of atmosphere true his presence is not confined to tiruvannamalai it never was 
The devotees, wherever they may be, find his grace and support, his inner presence, not merely as potent, but even more potent now than before. And yet, now as before, the solace of a visit to Tiro and Amalai sinks into the soul, and residence there has a beauty hard to describe. There have been saints who have promised to return to earth for the renewed guidance of their devotees in life after life. But Sri Bhagavan was the complete jnani, in whom there is not even the vestige of an ego that may indicate rebirth. And the devotees understood this. His promise was different. Open quote. I am not going away. Where could I go? I am here. End quote. Not even I shall be here, but I am here. For to the Yani, there's no change, no time, no difference of past and future, no going away, only the eternal now in which the whole of the time is poised, universal, spaceless, here. What he affirmed was his continued uninterrupted presence, his continued guidance. Long ago he had told Shiva Prakasam Pillai, he who has won the grace of the Guru shall undoubtedly be saved and never forsaken. They quickly discover how true this was. More than ever, he has become the inner guru. Those who depended on him feel his guidance more actively, more potently now. Their thoughts are riveted on him more constantly. The vichara leading to the inner guru has grown easier and more accessible. Meditation brings a more immediate flow of grace. The repercussion of actions, good and bad alike, is more swift and strong. One devotee, Dr. T. N. Krishnaswamy, believed himself to be bound to Sri Bhagavan only by personal love and devotion and said sorrowfully after the Mahasamadhi, open quote, for people like me, everything is finished, end quote. A few months later, returning from a visit to Tiruvannamalai, he said, open quote, even in the old days, there was never such peace and beauty there as now, end quote. And it is not only the introspective type who feel the continued guidance. It is an immediate response to the devotion. But from the time when the spirit left the body and a bright star trailed towards the hill, devotees have felt more directly that it is holy ground. They have felt it they have felt in it the mystery of Bhagavan. Ancient tradition has it that Arunachala Hill is wish fulfilling and pilgrims have gone to it through the centuries with prayers for boons. But those who feel its peace more deeply do not wish for the way of Arunachala is the way of Bhagavan that sets one free from wishes, and that is the great fulfillment. Now as then, he guides whoever approaches him and whoever submits to him he supports. To all who seek, he is here. Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Ramanaya. Mountain Path, January 1966, Ramana Satguru. He is now as he was, 
To many, he said, you are not the body. We see now that he was not the body. In his body's lifetime, as now guidance came to all who turned to him, whether they could approach him physically or not, now as in his body's lifetime, it radiates with peculiar force from his ashram at the foot of Arunachala. People say I am leaving, he said, just before the body's death. Where could I go? I am here. Not I shall be here, but I am here. He is here in the eternal here and now. He is here in each one's heart. He is here also in his ashram at Tiruvannamalai. He is the Guru now as he was. Those many who never saw him in the body find his guidance no less powerful than we who did. Therefore, it is not necessary for any successor to give initiation in his name. The initiation was silent and formless, as it still is. The guidance was straight to the heart, bypassing words and thought. Understanding is needed and courage and devotion. The path is there and the guide to lead and support you to the goal. Only for our sake, the Guru appears outwardly. He is the self in the heart. But because the impure mind misinterprets messages, the instructions are received outwardly to be followed inwardly. What is Ramana? When he joined in singing, Ramana Sadguru, he point. What is Ramana? When he joined in singing, Ramana Sadguru, he pointed to his body and said, Do you think this is Ramana? In the recesses of the lotus shaped heart of all, from Vishnu downwards, there shines the absolute consciousness, which is the same as Arunachala or Ramana. When the mind melts with love of him and reaches the innermost recess of the heart where he dwells as the beloved, the subtle eye of pure intellect opens and he reveals himself as pure consciousness. Some people have got a false idea that self-inquiry is a coldly intellectual method. There is no such thing. Intellectual understanding may be helpful up to a point on one's quest, but it cannot be the quest. I am not this body. I am not the thoughts. Maybe a useful preliminary to the inquiry, but it cannot be the inquiry. The inquiry is not a mental investigation such as a psychologist might indulge in. It is not a probing into the faculties, urges, memories, or tendencies of one's conscious or subconscious mind, but a quest of the pure I amness that lies behind all these. A man is made up of acting, thinking, and being. Being underlies the other two because you can't act or think unless you first are. But it is usually so covered over by them that it is not perceived. It can be compared to a cinema screen and they to the pictures projected on it. It is the screen that supports the pictures and yet it is so covered over by them that it is not perceived. Only very rarely for a flash, one is aware of just being and feels it a pure, spontaneous, causeless happiness. It is also pure, thought-free consciousness. This means that although the term meditation is conventionally used for self-inquiry, it is not meditation as the dictionary defines it. Meditation requires an object something to meditate on, whereas in inquiry, there is only the subject. You are not looking for anything new, anything outside yourself, but simply concentrating on being, on yourself, on the pure I am of you. It is not thinking but spending thoughts while retaining consciousness. This means that inquiry is not merely a cold investigation, but a battle. Every path is in every religion. The ego or apparent ego common to all of them. The only difference is how to do it. 
There are paths which set you attacking the various vices individually, lust, arrogance, and so on, and cultivating the opposing virtues. But self-inquiry is more direct. This is what self-inquiry is aiming at. It does not teach one any more theory of doctrine. It is quite possible to know all the doctrine that is necessary before you start. Simply that being is and you are that. What it does after a certain amount of practice is to bring increasingly frequent and lengthy experience of pure timeless being which is also pure awareness and unruffled happiness. This is not mental and yet the mind is aware of it. It is not physical and yet it is felt physically as the vibration or a waveless calm. Once awakened, it begins to appear spontaneously even when you are not meditating or to subsist as an undercurrent to whatever you are doing, to the routine of life while you are talking, even while thinking. This is the path that Bhagwan laid down. It is independent both of forms and doctrines. It requires no ritual. It can be followed invisibly by the housewife or shopkeeper, no less than the monk or yogi. The grace of Bhagwan is available to all who turn to him, but it is those who strive on this path that utilize it the most fully and the most wisely. It is an unfailing support and an inexhaustible treasure for them. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya. This concludes our humble offering from Tampa, Florida. Now turning over to North Carolina. Namo Ramana to all.